Danielle, I want to bring you in here uh, because you went into care in the system at the age of 11. Yeah. Can I ask you how many homes you were in? Uh, so I had 13 homes altogether. In, 13 homes in, in how many years. years? In six years? Six years. And we talk about consistency? Yeah. What does that do to you? Um, it was tough. Like I was in foster homes, I was in uh, children's homeless services and I was in residential homes as well. So I've had it all. I've had it all. It's a lot of moving around. Yeah. And school? Uh, skill was like real tough for me because I done my junior cert and then I was in child homeless services um, in transition year. So then after, like, transition year is like just a dossier or whatever, so... Shame I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on. Um, so I was, I was still going, but I was getting up at half five every morning to travel from Donna Bay out to Dunleary to where my school was. Half five? Half five every morning at the age of 15. Yeah. Because um, I wanted my education. Uh, that's the only thing that I, I had going for me at the time. I, I wanted to be someone I wanted to get. I, want, I had a goal. I wanted to achieve something with my life. Um, but I was going in, I had no uniform at the time. And I, like, as Suzanne said, I was that smelly child. Um, I used to get, like, walk around doing laps in our school. Like, I'd have people saying, oh, she can't afford a uniform. Uh, like, she has no, no family, like her family don't love her and stuff. Like, things like that, like, it really, really got to me. What are you doing with your life now? I, I, I'm uh, just... Now, like, I'm an after school teacher now, so I, ah, come I'm on, working that's so now. Good. Like... Oh, that is so good. I love it, I love, I love you for that. No, really. I mean, to have to put up with that, like in yeah. school and in life, and to come out the other side like that, like, yeah. you're remarkable. You deserve all the praise you get. That, and I'm not in patronising, I really mean it. No, but you've got to, but you've got to take a bow. Yeah. You've got to take a bow. What, what do you have that somebody else would have ended up, say, drinking or doing whatever there, that, that couldn't have that ambition to get them over the line. What, what was it? You wanted the, you got up at half five, you travelled across the city to be there, despite the abuse and the slagging and the meanness. It's just I had a goal. I wanted to do something in my life. Like, I wanted to be a gym instructor years ago. <laughs> uh, so, funnily enough, how like, that all changed. So I went to college and stuff, and I'd done a couple of years in college doing uh, health and fitness and soccer coaching. I have all my coaching badges and stuff. Uh, but then... I, got, I fell pregnant at 19 yeah. in my course. Yeah. And then when I fell pregnant, it wasn't about me anymore. It was like I was growing like this little person. And because the upbringing that I had, it was like... That I wasn't going to happen again. Yeah, that's oh. exactly it. Like, so okay. Ellie basically like, saved my life in a way. Like, it flipped a switch in my head that like, was like, oh no, I, I, want to make, I want to make a life for her. Yeah. I want to do well for her. I want her to have... A strong home. I want her to have a strong family. I want her to have strong supports around her, mm. so that she just didn't have like the lifestyle that I had. She should be very proud of her mum. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs>